Succi. But the fagato, the liver and pluck sausage, wasn't so easy. I'm so, whoa, here we go, thank you. <laughs> that one ran away with me. And it really is an unbelievably bright colour when it's inside. Thank you, there you go. Those sausages that are going to be air dried as salami are moved inside. Bruno calls this a rustic kitchen. It's an outbuilding from the main house with prep space, a small fire, and two big windows with shutters. Are you repairing it? You've made, you've made a plaster out of skin. It's plastic surgery, that's astonishing. There you go. The environment is completely controllable, so sausages are hung in warm air for a couple of days until the meat sets and the skins go papery. And then the windows allow a flow of clean, cold air from the valley to complete the drying process over the following weeks. It had been a long and amazingly productive day. It was a privilege to work with the family, and we genuinely used up every part of the pig. Except one. I'd forgotten about the blood. But the next day, Anna showed me how that was used. Ingredients were simple. A pot of water with a touch of bay, some rock salt, some polenta, very finely home ground. A mysterious herb gathered in the mountains that Anna called chimino, but no one seemed able to translate. Orange peel from the garden, a touch of Anna's home dried chili, and what looks like a gallon or so of clotted pig blood. This is the first for me I don't think I've ever cooked on a, a, a tarmac layers ring outside in a big tin bucket with a bit of broom handle. But it's, uh, it seems strangely appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> With most blood recipes, you actually have to either use the blood warm or you keep stirring it. Uh, and, and it's very difficult for it not to throw clots, which is what it's naturally supposed to do. This stuff actually clots it to begin with. And then as it hits the water, it separates. And the fibre in the clotting material has actually pulled it together into this proteinous mass. Um, it's, it's about the consistency and texture, actually, of liver. It's quite soft. Uh, and, and it's absolutely full of goodness. It just looks a little bit terrifying. After 20 minutes of stirring the cauldron, Anna appeared with a sieve and a washing up bowl. She scooped out the clotted material, which was quickly spirited away to the kitchen to be fried with onions. <laughs> now here's, here are the herbs going in there. Chimino. Chimino. This is, um, and the orange, orange peel, the orange peel, which this seems to be very much of this region. And when you can see the oranges out there growing on the trees, you know why. And the smell again coming off is, is fantastic. Suddenly, Anna appeared from the kitchen with another secret ingredient. Bits of pork and cured lardo fried in oil and garlic. <laughs> can, I have, can I have a try? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, can, can okay. <laughs> Apparently, the ancient Spartans used to eat a blood soup like this. But, um, okay. <clears throat> Here it goes. <clears throat> okay, there's. There's a fair bit, a fair bit of chilli in that one. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot of chilli. Um, <laughs> While Massimo kept up the stirring, Anna mixed the polenta with a little cold water to stop it going lumpy, and then poured it into the stock. Stir like a devil. Once the polenta had been added, there's nothing to do but stir and chat. Massimo is executive chef at Bruno's restaurants. So on. So where do you where do you come from in Italy originally? Because you're not from exactly here, are you? No, I'm not from here. My my parents are from Naples. I right. moved to England about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Ten years yeah. ago, and then I met Bruno about uh, two years ago. How big is your brigade? Two, it's quite big brigade. Mm. One we got five chefs, wow. and the other one we got I think eight. Yeah. All Italians? So all Italian. Well, my mum is included. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum is still cooking for you? Yeah. That's, so that's where all the secret recipes come from? Yeah, well, some of them, some of them. So obviously what we're looking at here is, is great refinement of the texture. Several loads more of the polenta have been slowly rubbed in. Um, I mean, it's starting to be really thick now, and this, this, the light underneath is not very controllable. I think if Massimo stops stirring for a second, it's either going to go, it's going to explode, or it's just going to burn straight to the bottom. But it's, it's, um, it's starting to look very, very porridgey. Let's have a, give it a, give it a little try. Hold tight. Mm. And then suddenly, with no warning at all, okay. it was time to eat. Spingo. Okay. 
Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, that is really good. Really good. Amazingly smooth. The fat is. Um, the fat spread dissolved. through it, hasn't it? The colours become really quite appetising. Yep. Mm. But it's hot. So just do it's with really hot. Some olive oil on top. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice as it is, simple. But as you say, with a with a on the side of a pork stew, or even with a, with something with some tomatoes, it would go it would go beautifully. Yeah, full of a taste. Yeah, you know, this for me tops it all off. The whole of the manufacture of all those lovely things from that whole pig we had. And something special about the blood thing. There's always a blood recipe that goes with each kind of pig killing. But this is just fantastic. And the way it fills and lines your stomach, and it's so warming and, 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 and comforting to have. It's the perfect end to a, to a, 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 a long, long, long day's work.